Yeah, there is absolutely a perception that ISIS are some kind of social media geniuses um, who maybe they should be working in an advertising firm. Now, I don't believe that to be true. Yes, by comparison to other terrorist organizations and other terrorist groups, they have been much more active in using new technology, not just social media, the internet more broadly, encryption software, anonymity, so uh, anonymity software. Um, now, why is that? Well, not necessarily through anything special about them, but simply where they're coming from. They are usually young, 20 to 30. Many have come from Western countries to fight in Iraq and Syria, and they have brought a culture, a digital culture with them. Um, so we should not be surprised that they are using Twitter and they are using Facebook. Well, of course they are. Content is deliberately produced in English frequently in a way that is very easy for Western journalists to be able to pick that up and share it. So for example, um, they, will collect, they will film a video or take a photo and they will send it directly to BBC journalists, CNN journalists, and we have evidence to show that ISIS fighters and their media team uh, do this deliberately. They say, we, you make sure you send this video to XYZ. Once it's picked up by these journalists, then they spread it further. When we looked at who, who had the highest reach in terms of spreading ISIS content, it was BBC, the CNN, Wall Street Journal. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's yeah, it's the news. It's news organisations that are most responsible. I firmly believe that censorship is not the answer. I think ethically uh, and in terms of a sort of a culture of censorship. I think we should move away from that and towards trying to educate people to what they see online. And that's not just with ISIS, but more broadly. And two, technologically, it is very, very difficult. ISIS and ISIS accounts um, have prepared very well for censorship. What happens is when Twitter shuts down one account, it will create a, that user will create a new account and other, other members of the network will share that account and it will re-follow them. And very, so if you knock out one moment, one account, it's like a swarm of bees or a swarm of birds. They all just reconfigure and they pull them back, pull them back into the network. Um, censorship is not an effective strategy. Um, and I think creating a, a counter dialogue uh, to counter this, these messages and counter this speech is a, it w is a more effective way to do it. When, for example, um, there was an execution video was released on Twitter, obviously it was shared very widely because there was anger and shock at the barbarity of this killing. But at the same time, there was a, a, an a opposing hashtag set up called um, ISIS media blackout and the idea was do not share this content it's exactly what they want you to do stop sharing it share something else um, in the case of this execution do not share the execution video share a photo of him back well, back in happier times right do not give them the audience that they so crave social media in particular has changed the rules of let's say terrorism or war records rep reporting on a war reporting on terrorism where before it was the preserve of the war correspondent who would put on his helmet and head into Iraq now everybody is a journalist everyone can report because they have a, a, a camera phone they have access to the internet um, so it's much more difficult to control how a war looks before you could say, okay, we don't want any journalists here, and a few would get through. Now everybody can report on a war, and that's a, very, that's, that's a new challenge for those looking to fight. Now for ISIS, that's brilliant, because they want to shock and upset people. So they know that if they commit an atrocity, 
it will be immediately shared across the whole internet and it will be very, very widely reported. Um, and yeah, so it, in many ways it does work in their favour.